to bring Hall of Fame coach Marv Levy to you in a second, but Steve needs to explain, since it was him and his son yeah. Luke that uh, were able to talk to him. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Marv got inducted into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame, and uh, the Hall of Fame, for those of you who don't know, is in Hamilton, Ontario, and some of you do know, my son Luke is the radio analyst for the T Hamilton Tiger Cats, so... Through all of that, we decided to team up together, try and get Marv on, because Marv couldn't travel uh, to the ceremony. So we got Marv on a Zoom call, my son Luke and I, uh, to talk to him about his induction into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame um, in conjunction also with his uh, induction into the Pro Football Hall of Fame so many years ago, becoming only one of three people to be in both those halls of fame, joining Bud Grant and Warren Moon. Here's the interview with Luke Tasker, the radio analyst for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and myself a week or so ago with Marv Levy. Well, Marv, thanks for coming on with us, and uh, congratulations on your induction to the Canadian Football Hall of Fame what was your reaction to, to getting the call? Oh, I, I tell you, I was overwhelmed uh, that it would happen. I, I didn't at the time know the president of the current, uh, the present, current president, the Montreal Owets, uh, Mario Cicini, but I think he's the man who made me work very hard on getting that to come to fruition. But I was overwhelmingly complimented uh, to hear that. It's been a long time since I left there. And there were only five of my 47 coaching years there were in Montreal, but they remained very prominent in my memories. I really enjoyed them. And you're, you joined an elite list, Marv. There's only three people that are in the Pro Football Hall of Fame and the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. It's you, Bud Grant, and Warren Moon in both halls. That, that's got to make you feel really special. Absolutely. Uh, I, I was aware of that. I did know Bud Grant well, competed against him in Canada and then competed against him when I was the coach of the Kansas City Chiefs and he is at the, with the Vikings. I had high regard for him. Whatever I knew about Warren Moon also was very high. And Steve will remember that one when we had the great comeback game against the Oilers with Warren down there. But uh, yeah, I, I'm overwhelmingly complimented to join those two in the uh, in both halls of fame yeah that's that's a, a special group of of men and dad you played with warren moon yeah. also in houston that's kind of cool yeah i'm connected to both you and warren warren was a teammate of mine in my rookie season with the houston oilers and then of course i played with you for over a decade i was going to ask you a little bit about your canadian foot uh football career mara my son luke played for the hamilton tiger cats and all i and i never saw this but I heard stories about this place called Iverwind Stadium. And it's one of those things where the locals seem to really love it and nobody else did. Do you remember Iverwind Stadium in Hamilton, Ontario? Well, very, very faintly, Steve. Uh, what I really remember more than anything there is uh, one of our uh, Great Cup championship games in in uh, Calgary, where it was about 20 below zero, and I wound up with a uh, frostbite that hasn't left me since. But <laughs> no, no, I remember going to Hamilton. I enjoyed the time there, um, but uh, it was an in and out type of experience in most of those places. And I know that Luke, you played there with the Tiger Cats, and uh, everybody there has every that I've heard from sure does have high esteem for you. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Uh, Hamilton, Marv, is very much a, uh, a Buffalo-like community in, Can in uh, Canada, and they take and hold the Ticats dear to heart, very much so like, like Buffalo does for the Bills. And uh, Iverwin is now uh, no longer uh, standing, but Tim Hortons Field is the home of the Hamilton Tiger Cats and the home of the Canadian Football Hall of Fame, where your bust now, now sits for, uh, for all... Uh, football future to come so that's a uh, very very cool the uh my my head coach for some of my seasons in canada also was inducted alongside of you for the hamilton or for the uh canadian football hall of fame and that is orlando steinhauer who is the current head coach of the hamilton tiger cats so marv it was very special i had my head coach and my dad's head coach in the same class for the canadian hall of fame very cool <laughs> oh it sure is no the yes. history is great would take a lot of study to catch up on it I know you're doing a lot of that <laughs> uh, yes. with the role you're, you're playing and did play before. So, boy, what an honor and joy it is for me to talk with uh, the taskers and to convey through you 
to those great fans in Canada, my fondest memories of my days up there. All right, Marv, last question for me. I don't want to take us down a rabbit hole or anything, but you were known as a special teams um, champion. And some of the things, I watched a lot of Canadian football when Luke was playing in Canada, and there are a ton of difference. It's a different game. There's no doubt about it. But there are a lot of similarities as well. And one of the things I would like to see, and I want you to get your take, is some of the special teams differences that there are in Canada. And I don't know if you can actually speak to it after so long, but some of the rules that they have in Canada um, are completely different than they are in the NFL. And I was wondering have, how likely or how prevalent was it that you've seen the NFL adopt rules like that and change? And what would you like to see different about the NFL, if anything? Well, <laughs> I'd like to see the Buffalo Bills win the Super Bowl. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, the, the leagues are different. It really is the same things win. If you run, throw, block, tackle, catch, kick better than your opponent, you're going to win whether it's the CFL or the NFL. Yes, the rules are different. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the Canadian, some of the Canadian league rules have changed. You hate yourself. Uh, when I was up there. But you could have men in motion towards the line of scrimmage, 12 people on a team. We used to have a 20-yard end zone then. The field had more than twice the square yardage of an NFL uh, field. Um, again, there have probably been changes made about which I'm not really aware. But uh, I remember that the athletic director up there when I was first brought in, J.I. Albrecht, told me, Marv, you got 12 men. On the team, I said, oh, okay, an extra receiver. And after the first game, uh, he came back in the office. I said, hey, J.I., you didn't tell me the other team could have 12 men also. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no, the rules are different, but they're interesting. Some of them are very excited. They keep the game uh, really going at, at high pitch. Hey, Marv, I, I got to think that uh, you came to Buffalo after your time in Kansas City, which came after your CFL years, and – I've always been told your first game as a Buffalo Bill was also one other player's first game as a Buffalo Bill, and that was Steve Tasker. And I got to think, Bill Polian and Marv Levy, both with CFL experience and putting an emphasis on special teams play, is there something about that that, that attracted you to, a, to, a, to the young uh, wide receiver special teams ace for the Houston Oilers? Yeah, I'll tell you the story. I remember it well. I, yes, I was hired in midseason – to take over as the head coach of the Buffalo Bills in the 1986 midseason. And um, uh, I retained the members of the coaching staff. Uh, Mr. Wilson fired the head coach, Hank Bulla. I retained the members of his coaching staff through that year. One of them, Joe Farragelli, who had formerly been on the coaching staff with the Oilers when Steve was there. And the rules in the NFL at that time if a player was placed on injured reserve, which Steve was with an injury, uh, you could not just activate him off of it. You had to put him up for waivers. And if no one claimed him, you could, re you know, re-sign him or activate him. Well, the, the Oilers placed him on waivers, apparently with a very strong intent of re-signing him. Whoever knew about a guy, you know, he was a, 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 a bit of a lower round draft choice, wasn't real big. Uh, um, and anyway, Joe Farragelli came and he said, Marv, I know your love of the special teams. I'm telling you, this is the guy you want to claim. And so we went down the hall, talked to our general manager, Bill Polian, said, OK, let's claim him. What the heck? Boy, was that a great move. I am always grateful to Farragelli to Polian, to Tasker, and to so many more. <laughs> well, Marv, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Congratulations on, a, on induction into what I guess has got to be yet another Hall of Fame. This one, the CFL, one of only three people to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame and in the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. Congratulations, and thanks so much for spending some time with us. Well, thank you, Steve, and uh, the day will come. I am certainly uh, hopeful, and, and I believe it, that I've been campaigning hard and Bill Polian too and some others. You've been on the brink of induction into the uh, NFL Pro Football Hall of Fame, and that day should come. Anyway, thank you all, and thanks for your friendship, 
your ability, and so much more. Thanks, Marv. Thanks, Marv.